That is a greeting, uh, a Swahili greeting to all of you, Africa, wherever you are. Once again, we meet on this beautiful Thursday where we look, of course, at matters on this continent of Africa, talking about football. This is African football. Hashtag front football. We want to hear from you. It is me, Elasto Kapoesha, <coughs> being with you for almost an hour, really looking at what we are going to discuss tonight. Let's get right into it. Uh, on the menu, it is the NF president uh, whose assets seems to have been seized. Craig Itafia is here. You tell us more about that. FIFA Cup rankings. Maybe you want to know where your country is ranked as far as uh, those uh, rankings are concerned. Uh, Steve Compeller versus Luke Airmel. Yes, when Steve Compeller speaks, never mind the football on the pitch, we listen. Uh, we want to hear what you say. Yes, it is Mourinho uh, saying that uh, Eto should have won the Ballon d'Or. Do you agree with him or not? A lot more, of course, that we are going to talk about uh, on this show. Let me also take this opportunity to introduce my guest. I could never, never, never uh, take this show on my own. I need uh, the tried and the tested, the knowledgeable, uh, those that have played the game, those that write about the game. It is, of course, award-winning journalist Veli Lemnyandu is here. Uh, Greg Tafia is here. And, of course, Timothy Patabaire uh, filling up uh, uh, the list of the panelists that are going to join me tonight in discussing uh, what seems to be another hot-heated uh, debate. We want to hear from you, of course, at home, uh, wherever you may be, it is uh, hashtag Fran Football. Engage with us, ask questions where you think that you need to know or you need clarity on one or two issues. But yeah, let me just uh, now just get into what we are going to discuss tonight. And like I said, that uh, it is the NF president's assets being seized. He's here, Greg Itafia. What is happening in Nigeria? Yes, we know. Uh, it kind of been a, a long, protracted kind of uh, uh, probe of corruption into the NFF. And now uh, we are seeing it at another level now where the assets have been seized uh, of Amaju Pinik and of course his uh, lieutenants, you know, that is the Secretary General yeah. and as well as the, the Vice President. Yeah. Uh, we saw that as well. Reports came out uh, during the AFCON uh, 2019 that as soon as he gets back home, yeah. he would be arrested. That never happened. So it's difficult to tell which way is this thing going uh, in terms of uh, this kind of battle between him, Amaju Pinik, uh, his administration, and of course, the government of Nigeria. Yeah, first of all, good evening to everyone. Alessa. I feel the uh, <clears throat> Nigerian situation is just uh, it's just something that, you know, it's a shameful thing, you know, you, you come to the platform like this and discuss about the administrative, most especially the NFF. You know, uh, lead by Amodipini, Shewu Diko, and, and the rest of them, you know. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of money that have been missing, you know, with the FA, you know, in terms of, you know, what normally FIFA do. Uh, they normally give uh, some money to the FA, you know, to run the, to run the league, you know. And as we speak right now, the league is supposed to start this weekend, mm -hmm. which is on the 22nd. Yeah. For now, the league is not starting because there's no sponsor mm -hmm. and they own a lot of people money in terms of the refs you know and a lot of things other 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 things that need to take place before the league starts and mm -hmm. so no one know when the league is going to start and which is a shameful thing because remember they divided the league into two groups the yes. last time so that we can meet into the we can meet the european uh, calendar yes. right now we 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 back you know this september now and I mean, there's nothing starting because it's supposed to start on Saturday. So, but anyway, you know, normally the president uh, always say that, you know, there's everyone's going to be investigated in terms of the FA people. And uh, coming back from the from the uh, Afcon, they're supposed the court they're supposed to arrest him. They say if he comes back, but you know, they need to find him guilty for you to do that. And right now. What they what they did now they feel like you know the asset the assets had they feel like the money for the for for the FA that's what he used to buy most of the property the property in Wari the property in Lagos the one in Abuja and even the one in London 
you know, that's, that's how serious uh, the situation is. But of course, you need to investigate him, you know, you need to be proven guilty, uh, good, guilty before they can, you know, you know, can t you can say that, no, it's guilty that, you know, you need to, you know, you need to, you know, you need to take all those things and you need to know, you need to know wh why they, they did all those things. Most especially, it's not him alone. And the other sad part, they used the, the, the other staff, you know, they didn't use, they didn't go direct in terms of the money-wise, because the money-wise is from the friendly games, they need to play against Bolivia. There's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes, you know, and now they use the other, other, other younger staff to do all this corruption. And now, you know, in the country, they try to clear if you even though you are the administrative side in terms of soccer or even though you're doing business just you asked that you need to declare your asset that's what the president is saying in the country that you need to declare your asset how you know how you come about <coughs> so, so, so asset yeah. you have you know so i think okay. it's a good thing but for me i just think you know <laughs> i'm opinion, you know what the good and bad i just think mm -hmm. the bad is more than the, the good the, the bad is more than the good let me bring in very there to hear his thoughts and what is happening in the Nigerian Football Federation, yes, Amaju Pinik, very powerful uh, football administrator on the continent, of course. We know that uh, he was the uh, vice president uh, at CAF uh, after, of course, Kweshin Yantachi, uh, you know, he was, was banned. Uh, he comes in there, but looks like he's got also a fallout uh, with the current administration at CAF. Uh, looks like there's some problems there. Problems at home as well, very late for, for Amaju Pinik, but he's somebody well-respected. In, in the African continent and looking at his tenure, looking at him, maybe what he has done and looking at what he's facing now back home, what do you take of, what is your take of everything that is just happening in, in front of our very eyes? Uh, good evening to mm. the friend and family and also uh, to those who are joining as well. Look, I think for me, what is also interesting is that uh, as you rightfully say now, you are pointing out to the fallout that is had mm -hmm. um, at CAF. Um, you will recall that in the recent um, assembly, uh, that's where he dropped from, was dropped by Ahmad mm -hmm. from being one of the yeah. uh, uh, three vice presidents. Um, as in fact, he was the first vice president, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and uh, now he's just a normal executive committee member. Mm -hmm. And and I think also the fallout also stemmed from the fact that. The authorities, uh, the investigators uh, from mm -hmm. Nigeria, they sent a letter to KEF mm -hmm. where they were asking some questions um, if NFF is to attend a meeting of KEF and wow. is, is the money that has to be paid mm -hmm. by the NFF to attend there to, you know, Ooh. and that's when KEF didn't even inform him mm. uh, or NFF about uh, this inquiry that inquiry. was coming from yes. the Nigerian from government. The government. Mm. Yes. Mm. And this is where now you could see the fallout. Yes. Because NFF is a member of CAF. Mm -hmm. you know? yes. Now you expect them when they receive something yeah, from the sure. uh, Nigerian government yes. is to inform them to say, do you know about this yes. that is coming from yeah. uh, your government? So mm. it it turns out that uh, KF responded straight to the Nigerian government um, where they were absolving themselves Ooh. from anything that, mm. that, that might have happened. Now, that, but this was something that happened in the height of uh, these divisions between Ahmad and, and also Pinnick. Mm. Mm. Yes. And I remember we were at the AFCON in Cairo when all these developments were, were coming out. Mm. And now... The fallout where you saw the changes that are, that, that are taking place. In fact, a story also goes that when Ahmad was arrested in uh, France, yes. yeah. um, Pinnick was this close, this close mm. to assuming power oh, sure. uh, oh. and be a stand-in CAF president. Mm. But something happened there uh, which resulted in... So now you can see that uh, back home, is having a tough uh, amateur picnic, and also at Kef as, well, as well, uh, his back is against the wall. Mm. You know, so this is the difficult situation that he finds himself. But you know, I feel that Greg, as a Nigerian, he knows understands understands these things better, mm -hmm. especially the issues of corruption and all mm. those yes. things. Yes. And look, there was a time where it's the NPFL. Eh? Yeah, there was a time when the NPFL we all felt it's coming okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. 
even when they also had clubs doing well yeah. even in 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 in, in CAF competitions mm-hmm. uh you had a team that was also in the group stages yeah. uh, with sundowns lobby stars lobby stars mm-hmm. um but now and also enyimba yeah. recently came yeah. back as well yeah. but the, but now i mean NPFL is also struggling for t- to get even TV. Yeah, there's no sponsor right okay, now. No. Right now, back home, there's I no want, sponsor. Yeah. I, in the I want to now. I want to to hear from Tim now. Uh, you know, from from what you've heard, the two gentlemen, yeah. and and from what we know, that um, you know sometimes there's a saying that we all want to use that no smoke without fire. Mm. Uh, and and why Tim is it that uh, these administrators once they assume they rise to the throne, uh, these things start happening where amounts of about 8.4 million that for now are unaccounted for yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 th- these these are respected you know really football administrators yeah. uh CAF, former CAF first vice president and somebody who you've thought that after isa had to uh, and also with the stability that we are seeing from ahmad ahmad in amaju pinik would actually be somebody really you know, be be seen to to rise to the throne of the highest office uh, on in African football. But it seems as if somewhere somehow he's lost the plot. Uh, definitely, I can I can trace uh, you know all this from you know from the rise of Pinnick. If you look at uh, the rise of Pinnick, we can sum it as ambition. You know, there's so much ambition underlining his rise to to the pinnacle. You know, of African mm-hmm. football. Uh, especially having been the federation president, I think for Delta State something like that, yeah. football association. Yeah, yeah. So we have got uh, we, we we have got uh, Pini coming through. You know, uh, there were controversies of how he was elected, but he managed to to arise to the throne. And uh, with his ambition, he was able second to second time. You got a second, second time. Time. Pause, eh? The first time, yeah, but even the second time. So mm. he was able to galvanize the rest of African uh, association presidents. I think there were fifteen, and that was towards the, that was the towards the rise of Infantino. So he was able to organize even the meeting of those African state of uh, to come on board, mm-hmm. and they were, he was able to spearhead the the dethronement of Ayatu, mm-hmm. which we all celebrated. Yeah. So you can see that he had that ambition all through, but because uh, it was in Yatachi and Pinak, and during that controversial time, uh, the two could not stand. So mm-hmm. I think they settled for Hamad Hamad. Yes. So you are still seeing ambition in in Pinak, the rise of the throne. So as things are panning out at this moment in time. Uh, like Vera has, has pointed out, you can see it's all um, ambition. And if you look at the head of state now, that is Buhari, he campaigned on on on, on and the promise that he will get rid of corruption mm-hmm. in the whole country. Mm-hmm. So that explains the introduction of the of that international corruption uh, yeah. co- uh, committee, committee that, yes. that is undertaking mm-hmm. to try and evaluate every Nigerian. First and foremost, we would like to say that is kudos to the government because we need to know how much you are worth and how you got it yeah. so that we can understand how you're going to lead us to the promised land, mm-hmm. not the other way around. So at this moment in time, it's found wanting because yeah. they need to for him to explain how he, had, uh, he was able to marry the wealth and everything yeah. like that. So at this moment in time, I think his, uh, some of his property has been amazed with some of his members in the administration. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as you are saying rightly so that they, were tr- they tried to... Uh, uh, to try and find calf to explain if indeed the federation had to pay to attend yeah. you know a meeting where they are affiliated as members uh, that is very telling and i think those are some of the the investigative work that is being done by this committee to find him guilty but if he's found guilty i think as africa we need to celebrate that because we need to be very strong worded and we need to to be seen to be acting well to be able to fight this kind of corruption yes Ahmed Hamed has got his own ills. We need to try and identify them. But at this moment in time, we have Samora uh, Michelle, who is heading this. But it will be very interesting because Pinnick was also one of the people who spearheaded uh, the election of Infantino. Mm. You know, this African bloc uh, being taken up. So we shall we are able to we shall be able to observe with a keen eye to see uh, the reaction of Infantino and the rest of African heads as regards right. this realignment of African football administration. We also want to hear from you. It is hashtag front football. Uh, tell us if you are Nigerian, what do you think about these events that are just happening uh, surrounding uh, the whole of the NFF, uh, especially, you know, regarding uh, what came in and, of course, what they are spending. Uh, now, Greg, you know, as we are staying with Nigeria, <coughs> yeah. uh, looking at um, 
this player that uh, you know the incumbent that is uh, Amaju Pinik is trying uh, to lure uh, to come and play for for Nigeria yeah. that is Tammy Abraham we've seen his form doing very well for Chelsea mm. uh, you know young man 21 years of age but really you know setting the Premier League alight you know yeah. uh, your thoughts looking at the long list of players that have tried to come and play uh, for the for the Super Eagles yeah. uh, who are you know are able to choose between you know playing for Nigeria and maybe for the country where they are right now or country of birth and so forth they've got of course they've got some links uh, through their parents they might have been born what what do you think especially this player that uh, because of what he's done uh, is he worthy uh, waiting for because I think he's playing a waiting game here. I feel, for me, I think I feel he's a good player. You know, first of all, he's a good player. He's a, he's a mobile striker. You know, he runs in the shoulder of the centre backs. You know, he has that movement. He's not a static striker that you can mark. You know, he has that movement. You know, he can. He has he has an eye of for for goals. You know, but for for me, I think he has more chance to play for Nigeria than than England. You know, because you have the likes of Harry Kane and a lot of them. You have Callum Williams, the one playing for Botman. You have a lot of Q there. You know, which I mean, it's gonna take him a long time. You know, for him to to break into that uh, to that senior team of. Uh, of England. Nigeria there, you know, Nigeria will treat him as a king because first of all, he but, is doing well right now. What but, he's doing but now... But you don't have an administration. No, we have. We have <laughs> you don't have a, you don't have have, a league we, taking place we in have, Nigeria. No, we don't have a home, the, the home league. In Europe, our players are playing in Europe. So that's where the national so you don't, you team... Don't that, care. So, so, we so care. you think <laughs> that uh, is, is a player that must, must actually come think, and for play me, for the Eagles? I think they must do all they can. No, no, no. That is the no, federation. No, not all. Not all. Oh, okay. not all <laughs> why, why not? <laughs> he must, we must meet halfway. Oh, he, he must be he willing. Must show, he show must also show willingness because now the FA they've shown willingness to go and meet him and say, "Okay, come," because you're not going to play in England. He's not going to play in England. We all know that he can play one game, two game. The next, but, next year they'll but, take him but, out but, of the. But, of the, of the tough, yeah. but for me, mm. I feel he has more chance to perform well with the environment because we have good players. You know, we have likes of Wobi, we have a lot of good you know players to, to do yes. very well. 